The Derbez family lives in the middle of Pasadena and produces enough crops to not only feed themselves, but actually sustains them with the sales. When Supreme Master Television went to visit them in Pasadena, Jules took us for a little tour of the vegetable garden. Okay, this is, this is our backyard, and uh, it was originally a driveway with a carport in the back. And so we had concrete backyard. And what we ended up doing was to grow on concrete, we used container gardens to be able to grow enough food. We, we brought in containers and grew our vegetables in the containers. But then last year, we took out the concrete and we, we raised, uh, raised up the soil and we raised our vegetables in what they call raised beds. And um, that's what you'll see in the backyard is all the raised beds that we have to uh, produce our, our vegetable crops. So uh, we also use uh, trellising and hanging baskets. And, we, and this, this arbor right here will have lima beans on it in the summer. That's how we can get on this property a couple years back for one year and then followed by next year, we got over three tons of uh, fruits and vegetables per year out of our uh, one-fifth of an acre lot. This is the heart of our backyard production is the raised beds. And we're growing maybe uh, 20, 25 different varieties of greens at this time of year. And we'll also have a fence line uh, full of fruit trees. And we also grow edible flowers back here for the, for the uh, restaurant trade. So uh, we'll, we'll pack in all the vegetables we can, all the fruits and, and flowers even, just so we can uh, make a living off this little piece of land in the city. Jules introduced our correspondents to the vast array of fruits and vegetables that they produce. It's a nice lettuce called, uh, two, two uh, names, speckled or freckled lettuce. You can see that, that's the name for these leaf lettuces. And this is your red lettuce right here, beautiful, beautiful leaf lettuce here. And uh, right in front of that is a mustard, a red mustard, a fine red mustard. Right here is uh, collards. This is a, a raised bed of, of young collards. And uh, behind that would be arugula, another raised bed of arugula. And what we've done here is we've cut the vegetables one time uh, to sell that produce to the restaurant. And we'll work down the bed right there. And this is cut and come again vegetables. So we'll get several pickings from the same bed. Instead of, instead of uh, you know, raise one vegetable and then lose it, we'll, this would be like a, uh, multiple pickings from one, one vegetable. So we started cutting in this bed, and then you can see all the beds are starting to uh, be cut into, the, the young beds. And that's the produce that we use or we sell. Over here is our heirloom tomato crop, again in a raised bed, and the, the bamboo is for trellising. When these, when these uh, tomato plants get about six feet high, we'll need to have some trellising support for them. And this is bull's blood beet. That's another uh, vegetable that goes into salad mix. Here we have a, a, uh, some uh, arugula flowers. These are pole peas that are uh, that you can have for edible potted peas. Snow peas, they call them. Snow peas, and that our system for snow peas right there. Edible potted peas. Here's your ladybug right here. First ladybug of the season right there. They're garden helpers right there. <laughs> this is just a temporary holding spot. These plants will be planted in the front yard, or, um, and we have to get a jump on the front yard because it's so small. What we have is, is a, a crop behind the, we're losing, when we lose a crop in the front yard, we have to have these ready. So these, these egg plants will be ready to, to transplant into the front yard when we're ready. So this is a holding zone for that. Uh, get them up to a gallon size and then move them out to the front yard where we have edible landscaping in the front yard. Okay, here we have, here we have some spinach. The end of the year spinach right here, and uh, another ladybug in there working it, and we have some uh, di dianthus for edible flowers, right there. We have we have uh, red Russian kale, right here. This would be a, a variety of kale, and then there we have some onions coming up, or transplanted onions. And same thing with lettuce. When you, you know, this this might last a while. Uh, in a cool, in a cool, uh, if it's a nice, uh, seasonally cool 
uh, spring, we'll, we'll get through uh, to maybe June. But once the heat turns on, the lettuce will go, uh, the lettuce can't compete with, uh, can't grow during the, the hot time. So we'll, we'll turn this over to beans or corn or, or uh, uh, peppers or eggplant or cucumbers. So it's just, it's just um, seasonal, we'll change it out what grows in the season. So uh, kale is a cool weather crop and uh, that, that's our, our vegetable that uh, we can use uh, right now in the spring. It'll probably, we probably won't grow it in the summertime. It'll be too hot. So all this will change to another, it'll be a completely different face here. We're, uh, we're growing cucumbers back there. Uh, we're growing beans back there and peppers. So um, eventually this will change over to a summer garden and we're in, we're in the between right now half, I guess, half uh, spring and, and, uh, and half summer. But it gets hotter in Southern California, so we, we go with the season. So we'll, we'll be going uh, basically all tomatoes, peppers, and all the heat-loving vegetables will go to that. And that's just a matter of uh, in the next couple months. This will be our future garden right here. I can see um, my son likes, likes a lot of uh, heirloom uh, tomatoes, uh, peppers in here. What else he's got? And I think uh, amaranth. So it's it's uh, this will be planted out in a couple months when they get full size. Jewel shared some words of advice with us before he continued digging in the garden. Well, I would like to say one thing is get rid of negativity, because uh, we are all plagued by doubts. When I first started this, uh, I didn't believe I could do it. So you have, to, you have to take a risk, you have to go out on a limb and you have to say, you know, maybe I should try something that I've never done before and, and just stop uh, being negative and try to do something positive because there's enough negative news out there to really to make you despair. So uh, turning it around and saying you can do something is, is, uh, is a start that we all have to make. Uh, another piece of advice I have is that uh, don't look for others to change you, ch you start by changing yourself. Uh, the government can't do it, the corporations won't do it. So what we have to do is we look to ourselves and, and point the finger straight back at ourselves and say, what can I do? Because change begins with you. Thank you for joining us on Healthy Living. Please tune in next week for the final feature on the Dervais family organic way of living. Up next is Enlightening Entertainment, here on Supreme Master Television. <laughs>